What's going on everybody? Finger and Frets coming at you live once again. This is my second Finger and Frets Picks DVD movie review inspired by the Aaron Freeze. <clears throat> I'm not going to go through too many of them. I don't want to take up too much time out of your day. Uh, I just wanted to go through a couple movies of mine that are in my Blu-ray collection and uh, in hopes that maybe we can share some laughs. Um, you know, if you've seen the movies and you know, if you haven't seen them, I hope you check them out. Let me know down in the comment section down below what you think of the movies, what you think of this finger and frets trend that I'm trying to do. If you like it, if you dislike it, just let me know. I'm always um, accept uh, acceptable for uh, any type of feedback. Just let me know, guys and gals. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching. We'll jump right into the movies. I've got, let's see, eight movies total. First movie is Rambo. It's the newest Rambo movie. It's not the old school ones. Okay. Sylvester Stallone stars in this movie. Um, it's, I, I guess it's kind of like a remake, but not really because it takes place um, when Sylvester Stallone's character Rambo is a lot older. And uh, there's like this, this, uh, this guerrilla militant group um, in Thailand that like captures these kids from these villages and, uh, and they just do terrible on unspoken of type things to him it's, it's very graphic very gory um there's there's probably uh anywhere from 200 300 type 200 to 300 deaths in this movie uh, but it's very very action-packed very fast-paced and uh it, it's uh, it's just a good watch so i hope you guys enjoy it if you uh if you have if you have seen it let me know how much you like it um but it's um it's called Rambo The Fight Continues. Uh, the best Rambo yet. Rambo is back with a vengeance. Pretty cool, right? Alright, continuing on. This is my favorite Walt Disney movie of all time. There's nothing that will ever compare to it just because of what it is, what it's about. Uh, and I just grew up on it. So it's kind of hard to top things you grow up on. Um, Alice in Wonderland. The animated version. Not that crappy remake thing that they were trying to I don't even know what the heck they were thinking of when they did that that's just I don't know it just wasn't for me but um Alice in Wonderland this is about a like a little girl who uh likes to daydream and she ends up uh going through this crazy crazy whacked out world man it was like all this random stuff happening um Apparently, from what I've been told, I, I don't know if this is 100% true or not, but it, it's it's been speculated that this movie, uh, everything that happened, was based off a certain individual that took a hallucinogenic drug, uh, it took acid, and that's what he saw, and then that, and they made a freaking movie out of it, so, I mean... I, I mean, I, I guess I can kind of see, like, it being, like, really, really crazy and just everything like that, because it's just, it's wild. But uh, if you haven't seen the original animated version, it is great. It is definitely worth the watch, so I hope you guys check that out. Um, <laughs> classic movie, Mel Brooks Spaceballs, the 25th anniversary collection. It's got um, Mel Brooks, John Candy, rest in peace, and Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis was also in... Uh, uh, I think he's most well known for Honey I Shrunk the Kids and stuff like that. But it's just funny. It's like a it's like a Star Wars spoof ripoff, um, you know. And this uh, this Rick Moranis' character he uh, he's trying to suck up like all the air and the oxygen and steal all the trees from Earth and stuff like that. It's just really really far fetched, really funny. Go check it out, Spaceballs. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do two of these at once. Uh, I'm a big Jean Claude Van Damme uh, fan. I, I don't know what it is about it. They're, the movies are so bad, they're good. That, I, that's that's the best way I can describe it. But Cyborg and Death Warrant. Okay, uh, <laughs> Aaron Freeze didn't really like this movie too much, but I, I thought it was pretty good, man. It's one of my favorite Jean Claude Van Damme movies. It's a uh, it's a futuristic movie, uh, post apocalyptic. Um, it's about this, uh, it's about Jean-Claude Van Damme's character. He's what's called a, um, 
a slinger, and in the movie, slingers, they kill these, like, what's they're called, pirates, and the pirates are, like, the really bad, bad people, and people are dying from the plague, and, uh, there's this, uh, futuristic, like, robot, they call it a cyborg, well, it was once a, a, once a human, and then, um, uh, these scientists created her into being, like, part human, part cyborg, or whatever, and she's carrying a cure for the plague, and, uh, and his job is to, uh, um, rescue her from the pirates and get her back to Atlanta to help, you know, help help cure this uh, disease plague that's killing out the entire world. Um, good flick, at least worth a watch, but I, I love it. I've watched it probably 150, 200 times. And then the other one is called Death Warrant. I love anything that's related to, like, prison shows and anything like that. But basically what this is about is he's a cop and... Uh, he gets this guy, he's nicknamed the Sandman because he never dies, and he goes he goes into this prison because there's a bunch of people dying for unknown reasons and stuff like that, and he ends up getting involved with it, and then that Sandman guy that he got, that he arrested ends up being transferred into the prison, and crazy stuff happens, so death warrant. Definitely a good watch. Okay, now this movie is fantastic. It's called The Fifth Element, Okay. It's got Bruce Willis, Gary Oldman, Ian Holm, and uh, Mila Jovovich. And uh, those of you that don't know who, um, I think it's M Mia or Mila, so I can't remember her name, Jovovich or whatever. She was the uh, was the Resident Evil star in the movie. So basically what this is, is about, there's these, uh, there's, uh, it's like pretty much like the end of the world's coming and it only happens like once in however many years and this alien technology is the thing that saves it and, uh, and they have to find these stones, like these big long stones, and they have to open them up somehow for, for this uh, meteor that's coming down. It's going to shoot up and like destroy it and all that good stuff. And a lot, it's a lot of action-packed stuff. Really good. Chris Tucker's in it too, and he is hilarious in this in this movie. But uh, it's all around just a great uh, science fiction futuristic movie. It reminds me a lot of like. Reminds me a lot of like uh, Star Wars Episode Two because it's like all the flying cars and stuff like that and. Uh, uh, just like a mix with like just any type of sci-fi action-packed movie you could think of, man. It's it's really good. It's really really good. Fifth Element. Okay, I've got two more for you. Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead. If you like horror movies and you like classic horror movies, not this new stuff that's like really far-fetched. I mean, this is pretty far-fetched, but this is the type of movie that you would want to see. It's a classic. Very very well spoken of. The remake I didn't think was really that good. I mean, it was okay, but uh, I mean, it's just. How can I put it? It's like ferociously original, okay? It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal horror flick. Um, but basically what it is, is this group of, these group of uh, people, they go into like this cabin out in the woods, and then there's something that's in the forest, and it's like a haunted, haunted forest thing. And they, uh, they go down in this basement, and they find this book. It's called the Necromo Necronomicon, and it's based on like all these de demons and things like that, and like they, it's about possession and stuff like that. And uh, Bruce Campbell's in it too, so that's definitely a good watch. And the final and most one of the one of my, it's, I think it is my favorite Blu-ray movie that I actually own. Uh, it's a collector's edition. It's filmed by Alex Cox. Uh, it's called Sid and Nancy. Okay, those of you that have been living on the moon for the past 20, 30 years, that movie is pretty much about Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious was a bass player in the, uh, in the band called the Sex Pistols. Now, those of you that don't know much about punk rock or anything like that, the Sex Pistols are what created that genre. A lot of people think that the Ramones from the Velvet Underground in New York were the ones that created it. It's just a big like, oh, it's the Ramones, the Sex Pistols, blah, 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 blah. Personally, I think the Sex Pistols created it. They created that genre and they made like the, just the entire, just the, just the way that you personify yourself as a punk rocker in a band. I think it's great. Well, basically what it is, it's like, it's letting you know the rise and fall of Sid Vicious. Now, Sid Vicious, he, was, he died of a heroin overdose, I believe in 1969. And uh, he met this woman named Nancy uh, and she was just a big junkie, and she was the one that inevitably got him into shooting dope. And uh, it just follows him, like, you know, how, how he got kicked out of the band, why he got kicked out of the band, and then, like, they live in the Chelsea Hotel in New York City in Manhattan. And just, just the fall, you, you just tell, like, especially when he's going through his uh, his withdrawals and stuff, like, oh, man, it's, it's just really, really, really crazy. I think Gary Oldman, right? I think that's his name. I'm trying to make you proud here, Freeze. 
try not to look too much into the back or whatever. Um, oh, man, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Yeah, Gary Oldman. Yeah, and Chloe Webb. Um, like I said, it, it got all types of awards. It's been recognized as the, one of the best um, uh, music-related uh, movie documentaries uh, slash kind of documentary um, in existence today. And this movie is extremely rare and is very, very expensive. I think I, 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 I like I said, I don't pay retail much for anything, but I did pay retail for this. I think I paid like $18 for this movie. And right now, I think it's worth like 40 or 50 bucks. But... You know, if you guys want to see this and, uh, you know, if you, if you follow my channel and, you know, you got a Blu-ray player, I'll be more than happy to just ship it out to you, you know, and let you watch it back or watch it. But please promise me that you'll bring it back to, or ship it back to me because it's an awesome, awesome video. Awesome flick. Well, that's going to do it for uh, Finger and Fret's Picks Volume 2. Let me know again in the comments, uh, comment section down below if you like what I'm doing with the Finger and Fret's Picks, what I could be doing uh, to make it better. You know, if you like the movies, if you don't like them, if you want to see them, you know, just let me know. I, I'm always up for, you know, chatting through the comment section. You, know, you can send me a private message or hit me up on Facebook, yada, 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 yada. It don't matter. But uh, anyway, I think that's going to do it for this time. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing and watching my uh, watching my vids and stuff. It really means the world to me. Um, and if it was not for the viewers, I would not be doing this. So thanks again. Thanks for watching, everybody.